Welcome to Guyana, a tiny country of under 750,000 people on the northeastern coast of South America. Originally named by the indigenous people, Guyana means land of water, and it shows. I'm kicking off my journey in the capital city of Georgetown. And guess what? It's breakfast time. And I've been told that Randy's exclusive egg ball does the best egg balls in town. So this is the best egg ball in Georgetown, right? That's what the fans say, that's what the people say. If you've never had an egg ball before, we have a hard boiled egg covered with seasoned cassava. Well seasoned. Well seasoned cassava, then you deep fry it. If you went to school in Guyana, this was a typical lunchtime snack, right? Yes. And this, I could tell right now, the filling, the cassava is so soft. It has a nice crispy exterior. Yes. Mango sour you make yourself? Yes, everything. And I also added some pepper sauce. Yes. Randy, look how soft that egg is, it's jiggling. Randy, to you, what makes the perfect egg ball? Anything you love to do and you do it in your way, you become successful out of it, once you put time into it. So this is the labor of love? Yeah, labor of love the hands. Yeah. What I like really so much good. about this, the egg white is very soft. Yeah. The filling is very light. Yeah. A lot of egg balls I eat, it is filling me up and- Outside because it's thick. It's swell up my belly. Yeah. This is really light and flavorful. That batter is crispy. I can hear it crunching when I bite through. Yeah. Sour is tart and vibrant. Pepper sauce, nice heat. This is the best egg ball I've had in Guyana. That's what the people say, yeah. Pow. It's Saturday, and now that I'm done eating, it's time to hit up one of Georgetown's famous markets, Mon Repo. Up the East Coast Highway, about 15 minutes out of the city center, Mon Repo is home to generations of vendors that all flock every Saturday to sell fresh produce, meats, and so much more. It really is a bustling marketplace that has whatever you need. This place is massive. How many stores are in here? This is incredible here at Mon Ripple Market. Look at the amount of fish that is being broken down here. This is amazing. We're gonna go check some out. Lots and lots of fish. Caught early in the morning and brought to the market. Prepped and sold to the hungry customers. This is trout? How you just cook it? Smell fresh. Here we have catfish trout. Adds a beautiful salinity. Adds a really nice texture, gummy-like texture to a lot of the different dishes. You can fold this right into your curry when you're cooking it down. Asa? Asa. You catch it? Yeah. This morning you catch it? Yeah, 400 this morning. 400? Yeah. What time is it, four o'clock, 5 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, early. Neck? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of neck? Chicken neck. Woo! Chicken neck, often known as the sweetest part of the animal. I know growing up as a kid eating duck curry, my dad and I would always fight for the neck. It's the sweetest meat. And look how much neck we got. You could just do a neck curry. Wow. Exciting. Duck cartel. That's amazing, duck cartel. You on Instagram? Yeah. Right, and then what you got here? I got sheep and goat here. No pachoni here? Yeah, yeah, pachoni. Oh, there? Yeah. Yo, duck cartel. This is what we're gonna use for our pachoni tomorrow. My uncle's gonna cook this up, but we need to clean this thing. It's the tripe, it's the intestines of the sheep. So we need to clean it very, very well. And then we're gonna cook it, soak it in hot water, the masala. We're gonna cook it low and slow till it gets tender. Now we drink Bang's beer. Sheep head, goat head, delicious from Malagatani soup. When you're in a country like Guyana, where the people, a lot of them don't have a lot of money, it's very important to use the entire animal from head to tail. You can't afford to waste anything. Prime cuts here on an animal are a delicacy. So it's important that we utilize the entire animal. Guana. Guana? Who has a guana? 
Yeah, come in. Why are you holding for the camera? Iguana is one of those ingredients that when you land at the airport and you're driving into town or on the way back, you'll see individuals holding them up and selling them. Hey boss, how you doing? Quiet, my brother. How do you select the right coconut? Yeah, easy. You don't know this here wrong. Nice, good shape. So you know when you hold it? Yeah, it's up for the water. You don't shake, what? This has jelly as well? Yeah, I have jelly as well. I'm gonna get six from you. How long have you been cutting coconut for now? 27 years. My friend wants to know if you ever cut yourself. Nah. Yeah. Here's a natural spoon where it is used to scrape out the coconut jelly. As a kid, I actually have a photo online, me feeding this to my mom. This is also a spoon in the back dam, right? Yeah, that's the eating <laughs> The dry yeah. one is the best. The dry one is the best. Yeah. So look here, we have no waste. Once you drink the coconut water and you get the energy, you can further use the coconut to pull out more nutrients, vitamins and minerals. Amazing. After a solid morning of roaming the market, I've learned a lot. But I'm hungry again. Time to check out a Monrepo staple. We are here at Sunny and Sweetie, opposite Monrepo Market. So after you go walk around the market nice and early, you build up an appetite, you have some treats with you. You come here to get a little bite before you go home. Famous for duck curry, famous for all things roti and some beautiful juices. This comes highly recommended. I'm gonna go eat my fair share. Food's at the table, it's time to eat. Here we are at Sweetie and Sunny's. We have the pine and the watermelon, we have the sorrel. I was just holding this at Mon Ripple Market, which is just across the street. This is a typical lunch that I would have here. Rice, cucumber, cucumber is always around, a little bit of salad, coconut choco, one of my favorite things, grated coconut with different spices, very spicy, achar. Here we have alu choca with some bhaji. So this is a typical vegetarian staple food here. And next we have my absolute favorite. Sweetie and Sunny's is known for duck curry. Let's not forget the cup of dal. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of dal, and can't forget the famous pepper sauce. Time to eat. Foods like these are Guyanese staples, packed full of flavor, and are sure to hit the spot each and every time. My belly is filled, but the day is not over. We're heading back into the center of bustling Georgetown to explore another market, Stabrook Market. Located on the water's edge of the city, you can find just about anything here. You'll find vendors all about Stabrook. Here at Stabrook Market, Stelling Gate, we have the Arsing Snacket, stall number 95. This is my aunt, Auntie Shanti. You've been working here how long now? In the family 42 years. 42 years, and what are you famous for over here? Pastries or snacks. So a lot of my favorites, we have the Chinese cake, we have pine tart, cheese roll, fruit cake, you got donuts, cheese straw, pone, cassava pone, which we're gonna collect some right now, egg ball, dal puri, anything you're gonna wanna eat, you're gonna find it right here with my auntie. Come see her and she'll take care of you. There's one thing I need while I'm here, hasa fish. It'll go perfectly with tomorrow's fireside cooking. We left Monrepo Market, right? And there's hasa everywhere. But we left and I realized I need to get some. So I come to Starbrook now. You have one lady selling ten hasa, another lady selling ten hasa. The price is twice the amount with one lady, the other one. Ten for four thousand, ten for two thousand. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Today we're back at the market. But this time, it's Borda Market, and I'm in for a special treat. I'm meeting up with local celebrity chef, Delvin Adams, owner of the Backyard Cafe, who's promised to give me an in-depth tour of the market and to meet some of his favorite vendors. Here at Borda Market with Chef Delvin Adams of the Backyard Cafe, very, very famous chef. He is touring me around Borda Market here in Georgetown, and I love seeing the differences between Monrepo Market between Starbrook Market and here at Borda. Each one has their own vibe and unique nature to it. Specific ingredients you get here, you can't get at the other markets. And Chef Delvin Adams knows this place better than anybody. 
So we're gonna stop over there, get to sample some of the, 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 the street pharmacist um, product. Now I know. Genius what, chef. Oh yeah, big time. Now I know what that looks like. Right, so you see the cappadula, and here is the raw version of some of them. Sarsaparilla, cappadula. Auntie, I brought another famous chef for you. Yeah, big up, big up, body tag. How you doing? Right? So she has all the different, uh, from fat burners. There's a cure. <laughs> right? All of the different products, and she owns this business that she's passing it on from to, her, to her kids, learn from her grandmother, right? It's a family business. Beautiful. Making home, homemade medicine that actually works. The vastness of the produce available to me at this market had my head spinning. I had recipe ideas constantly coming to me. Now we're gonna stop at one of the the, the food the food vendors. Uh -huh. Get some real. This is this is this is this is what you call. Oh man, I don't even have a word to to explain what this feeling here is like. Come in and eat street food from the market vendor. Let's get some fried fish and dog. All right, good. Oh shit, that's quick. And right. look at look at the bubbles, man. This just came out of Chef, the Chef, what type of fish is this? This is bangamiri. So this is typical that you get in the sandwich, right? Right, because bangamiri is the fish that we use every single day in every household, every restaurant. Andy. Thank you, Andy. Excuse me. That is the bite. That's good. Mm -hmm. Bro. This is nice. Come down and you, you get a bowl of soup, man. When last you had a chicken food soup that looked something like this? And chicken foot has healing powers. Oh, you got some noodles in here too. Yeah. I mean, it smells like home cooked chicken noodle soup. Uh, and the beautiful thing, the gelatin. All the fresh vegetables. The gelatin, the starches, thickening that up too is really nice. These stalls provide food, not only for the market vendors, for the truckers that would come, drop off their goods, the schools nearby, everybody's coming here. And a lot of people shy away from the market. Oh, I wouldn't go there and eat and, and, and stuff, but I mean, look at it. Look what we have. This is amazing. I'm telling you, This man. is next level. <laughs> Very informative tour with Chef Delvin Adams here at Border Market. Everything is available from seafood to meat to spices to clothing to shoes. Anything you want to get is over here. Very amazing to have someone tour me around because there's so, thousands of unique products here. So thank you to Chef Delvin Adams. Now we go to the Backyard Cafe. <laughs> Welcome to the Backyard Cafe, where we'll be kicking things off with a bit of a challenge. Chef Delvin Adams, Chef Dev, we're here in Guyana at the Backyard Cafe. This place is famous. Chef took me around to Border Market, showed me everything. And I use this a lot, Chef. When I yes. just do the pepper pot videos, the chicken curry videos, my hot sauce video, this is the pepper I'm using. You told me the yellow is a little bit more flavorful than the red, cool. and I'm used to the red. So you're doing the red, I'm doing the white. Yeah, in and your chow mein, the next chow mein session you do, do it with, with, with that yellow weary pepper. You yeah. see the, the, the flavor is gonna pop. And we wanna raise awareness about this unbelievable item that we both fell in love with that that's, is only here. That's it, it's only here and tiny as you see it right here. This went from $60 because of the flooding to $3,000. Right now on the market, because the price dropped a little bit, you can get it for like $800 a pint. Right. Right, so glad that we get to raise the awareness people get to see it and the more people go out to buy stuff that's coming from the farm the price went back down i don't want you to stop talking so, but you gotta stop talking you gotta stop we talking gotta... because we gotta eat this so let's do it mommy is not here so let me do this quick right yeah we're we're challenge we're we're challenge there you go man flavor bro mm-hmm me talking 
I get citrus notes mm -hmm. coming through. I get like green apple notes coming through. I get heat, but very manageable on my end. Yeah, no. Mine is not manageable, dude. <laughs> so my eyes are beginning to water, but I can still speak. I expected it to be hotter because I eat really, really hot. You guys know that. But um, I mean, it's very powerful. Yours had a little, little more size. Yeah, because you give me the red one, buddy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Still very hot, but I'm still uh, holding out. I'm with Chef Devin, man, and we're doing this. We were right? challenged. We were challenged, just went down. So that is. For our main course, I helped Delvin cook his signature dish, a char prawns and stir fried farine. I know you come in, I had to get everything set, right? Because I know you got a full schedule. So I had everything seasoned here. We, we spoke about this is salt, a little bit of black pepper, and everything that's in the achar, the pepper's still burning by. Yeah. Like past me two minutes, I could do this. These local shrimp here as well. So it's peeled, deveined, tailon, there's mango, red onion. Uh, what is this green? This is uh, uh, the, our, our celery. So you got celery and shallot, or scallions or green onions. Garlic? Every single thing that's in the achar, is what you use to garnish. So no no surprise why this is a signature dish. I mean, this is a flavor town. Super flavorful. You're awesome. The mango is going to ah. mellow down that, that, that spiciness from the wee, wee wee pepper from the achar. I see plenty berry in there. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, that's same one. Get this into a hot pan. I see you get all the goodness out of the pan. Of course. The string gets in there. Big flavor, man. I'm telling you, man. The mango, the sweet pepper, so much garlic, ginger. Really nice cook. Yep. Really special, man. Yeah, man. Nice soft shrimp. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a day. Delvin, his mom, and the rest of his team sure know how to treat their guests. The Backyard Cafe is a must-see when you come to Guyana. Today, we're in Mahaika, a small village where my dad grew up. I'm at my Uncle Dashrat and Auntie Yvonne's home for some traditional Guyanese fireside cooking. There's something very unique and magical about fireside cooking. We are one with nature and we are cooking on an open flame, constantly having to monitor the heat source. It truly is the best way to cook here. We are connected to the cooking process more than ever. Where did this style of cooking come from? How did it make its way to Guyana? India from the fourth parents and bring it here. The fourth parents. So they call it chula. Or chula. Is, yeah. But we call it fireside now. Right. So chula is the Indian word, I believe, for stove. Yeah. So the indentured slavery, the yeah. British brought the Indians here to Guyana. Yeah. And this is a tradition that the Indians brought with them. And many years later, we're still using it today. Yeah. This is a fireside style stove. It's made of concrete. At the end of the cooking process, mud, clay, cow dung and water are mixed and applied to the fireside to ensure that the concrete doesn't crack. This technique is called dabbing. Okay, so this is mud and cow dung and water mixed together. Yeah. And we clean the fireside and make it stronger. And you do this when it cools down after you're done cooking? Yeah. And why do you use that mixture? Well, this strengthens the fireside. That, and this is strengthened. this strengthens the fire side and this yep. is traditional. And it's traditional. So this goes into all those cracks and everything, right? Right. And this is how you preserve the fire side. Yeah. And this is called dabbing. Dabbing, right. Dabbing. Today, my uncle and aunt are cooking up Kazrip chicken chow mein, pachowni, fresh coconut milk hasa curry, and a chana and aloo curry, which is chickpeas and potato. My favorite dish here, no doubt, is the pachowni, which is sheep's intestines. 
So this is the sheep guts going in. We saw this at the market yesterday. This is the tripe, the intestines, liver as well. Yeah, liver, the light. And this all has to get cleaned very, very properly because it's obviously the innards of the animal. So we need to clean it very well. Uncle and Aki cleaned it. Cuts like these are usually tough. So you have to cook them low and slow until tender. About two hours later, the pachowni is done. It's finished cooking, we know, because we can take a spoon and put it right through and it comes out clean. A childhood favorite of mine. I watched it from start to finish. I can't wait to make my own rendition on this. Thank you to my uncle and my aunt. Let's taste this and see how it goes. Super hot. I'm able to effortlessly chew through the intestine now. One of my favorite things, the jeera, the garam masala, the heat, all the ingredients, you can taste them, it's sweet. The pepper, one of my favorite things in the world. So happy I could see it start to finish. Fireside cooking is an integral part of Guyanese cuisine. When you're cooking in this manner, the flavor is unmatched. Look at this beautiful food my uncle and my aunt cooked today. The pachowni, the fresh coconut milk hasakari, the alu and chana, the kazrip chicken chow mein. Fireside cooking 101. Today, I'm in for an adventure because I'm leaving Georgetown and heading across the river, all the way up to Swartuk on the Essequibo River. Ending the day with a treat, baigan choka. First step is to take your baigan, take your eggplant, make an incision. And this technique of stuffing the eggplant before roasting it with these garlic cloves is a step that everyone does when making this dish. My mother and my grandmother were the first two people that I ever saw do this. So we take the garlic clove and we stuff it right into that eggplant. I think per eggplant, what we can do is we can go ahead and stick, let's say four to five. Now I have three eggplants all day and I'm gonna take them over to this fire and roast it. So over here. Now we're over here, you see we have a beautiful fireside right by the water and I'm gonna lay these down in the embers. I don't wanna lay it directly into the fire because it might be a little bit too aggressive. But what I'm gonna do is with these beautiful embers here, I'm just gonna drop them and let them char completely. Wow, is this ever hot, but this will impart the best flavor for our bike and choka. Fresh whole tomatoes right along beside it. Once the skin becomes fully charred, spoon out that smoky, soft eggplant. Mash and mix it with the garlic, peeled tomatoes, chopped wary wary peppers, onions, parsley, oil, and salt. This dish is a childhood classic. It's nothing shy of sensational. A dish that everyone should try. And it's vegan. It's early in the morning and before the sun gets out, we're gonna make some pickled mango, but with a bit of a twist. This is an old transport ship that went out of commission over two decades ago and since has been left here to rust. Today, I'm going to carefully cook atop it. We are making one of the quintessential snacks of Guyanese cuisine. This is pickled mango. In my jar here, I have some water and some vinegar. And to that, I'm going to add in some salt and this will create our salt water brine. This is what's going to pickle the mango. I'm also going to add in some heat. So of course we have the infamous weary weary pepper that in Guyana, I eat this thing nonstop. 
but also back home in Canada whenever I can get it. Fortunately, we have a little plant at home too, but whenever I can get it, I always want to use it. So I want to make this really, really spicy. You can make it as spicy as you like. So we have the vinegar, the water, we have the salt, and the next thing I'm going to add in is pieces of green mango. If you wanted to pickle something a little bit more sweet, it would eventually break down. So the pickling is done best when you use the green mango. So I want to get it all in and you'll see the liquid level start to rise. And of course we want everything to be submerged. So if I need to add a little top up of water, I definitely could. And it looks like I'll just need a little bit of a splash. Not gonna use that piece anymore, okay? Everything's gotta be on the board on this shipwreck. So that stays there. And I wanna make sure that it's not coming too high up and I just need probably a little splash of water with the vinegar just to make sure everything's submerged or else you get like a half pickle. So what we wanna do is just go not right up to the top, wanna leave some room. It already looks so pretty. My mouth's watering just thinking about how sour, spicy and salty this is gonna be. I can press this down, pop the lid on, and here we have a pickled mango. I'm gonna give my hands a little bit of a wipe because once you touch that weary weary pepper and you touch your eyes or you go to the bathroom, you're gonna yell, okay? You're gonna scream. And here we have the shipwreck pickle mango. Check this out. We're making our way to Bartica a small mining town on the Essequibo River. We've taken a trip to the local market to see if we can find some fish for our fish cakes. Hey boss, how you doing? Huh? You got saltfish? Saltfish? Yeah, plenty, man. Oh. Uh -huh. How much for this thing? That's 700. Thank you. We've got our fish and a few other key ingredients, but there's one problem. I'm hungry, so it's time to eat. Curry chicken, rice, and mad pepper sauce. Oh man. Belly's full, let's head home and get these fish cakes going. It's time for a wonderful snack, fish cakes. Let's make some fish cakes. Over here, I have salted fish, also known as dried red snapper. Pick this up at Bartica Food Market. Into my bowl will go our salt fish. It's been soaked in water, boiled gently, and rinsed out once, so it's quite salty. Next in, we have some cassava that's been mashed up. And to this, I wanna add in different seasonings. So chili powder is gonna go in, and I like it spicy, so we're gonna add in a good set. We also need some seasoning, so some black pepper, a little bit coarse, give us a nice bite. We have smoked paprika. Next to this, what I'm gonna do is add in some finely sliced onion. If the onion is sliced too thick, then it's gonna prevent these from holding their shape. So make sure you take some time and cut it really small. Onion can go in. Next to our fish cake, what we're gonna do is add in some greenery. So from the market as well, I got this beautiful green onion here. So I'm just gonna use the green bits on top. This will give us a really nice color and flavor. And to minimize my strokes, I can just keep breaking it down. And we wanna get nice smaller pieces of this. And this is gonna go in to season this wonderful fish cake. Get in a little bit of garlic. So I'm gonna chop some of that right now. Take my knife and smash the garlic down until it, it's flat. Again, flat. And now the garlic is gonna break down so much faster. And it's gonna give us a really nice flavor. Very gently scrape that in. For even more heat, what we're gonna do is add in a little bit of worry worry pepper. Worry worry pepper can go in. Let's add a little bit of the mango hot sauce that we made earlier. Next, what we can do is take an egg, crack that in, and that's gonna help us bind. And now that all of our seasoning is in here, I'm gonna assess and see if we need to add any breadcrumb. My oil is heating up over here and it's nice and hot, but now I wanna get my hands in here. It's very salty, but just a pinch of salt, just cause that cassava needs to be seasoned as well. And now what we wanna do is bring this together. You can see with the amount of color that's in here, 
the chopped up garlic, onions, scallion, wary wary, and the spices that we've used. This is gonna be packed with flavor. To bind this up a little bit, I'm gonna add in a little sprinkling of breadcrumbs. Not too much, because we don't want this to have too much breading in it, but it'll help everything come together. Wow, lots of flavor in there, and this will be delicious. So we wanna roll nice, long fish cakes, and now it's time to fry them until we have beautiful color. So I'm gonna take them one at a time and gently lay them down in my hot oil and see right away. The more I add, the more the temperature of the oil will come down. And we don't want to fill this up too much or the oil will overflow. Once you have a really nice golden brown color, nice piece of wary wary sticking out there and you can see the onion bits, I'm going to remove it to the paper towel. Now that's really nice and colored through. And here we have our finished dish. This is a fish cake made with cassava and salted fish, which is dried red snapper from Bartka Market. I'm very hungry. They're very hungry. Pepper sauce that we made earlier from three different types of mango goes with it. And just to show you what the inside looks like, beautiful fish cake with all that lovely seasoning in there. The onions, where you ray pepper, scallion. Give this a dip and enjoy. Hmm. My culinary adventure here in Guyana is almost up, but there's one last thing I need to do while I'm here. I'm going to Takuma Indigenous Restaurant to meet Colin and Valerie, who say they've prepared some traditional indigenous meals for me to try. We're at a really special place. We're on the Kitty Sea Wall right now. We're gonna check out Takuma. They specialize in indigenous cooking. Laba, Tuma. I wanna learn. I don't know a lot about this cuisine, so I wanna take this opportunity to see what really goes down here in Guyana. I'm gonna go check it out. That's it. So what are we gonna be eating today? Of course we have, well, we, you know, we do the Tumas. Uh, we yeah. are more or less um, indigenous. So we do Tuma in various, uh, different kinds of meats, fish, and so on. So everything you would have, it would be tuma. But for today, we also did some curry and lava. But it's always wild meat and uh, fresh water fish. Here at Takuma, with Colin and Valerie eating some indigenous cuisine. Fish tuma, specifically tamaki. Very meaty. I've been learning a lot about this liquid when you strain cassava before you turn it into kazrip, which is all I really know. So I'm very excited. I can see why tamaki is very popular. It's very meaty, very sweet. This is known as cassava bread. So as you can see in, in indigenous cooking, cassava is used everywhere and there's no waste. When you use the mat speed to strain the cassava, the froth, the liquid, all gets used for tuma. What's left in the strainer gets used for farine, which is here. Very similar to a couscous, and it's got the calabrese, which is um, a type of sausage, and it's coming from the Brazil region. Here we have the infamous laba, which is known as a forest animal. It is wild meat. And this is a very popular dish. If you come to Diana and speak to any locals, they will certainly know what this is. And this one is curried, and it's cooked down a bit, almost bunjal style. I'll take a taste and see how it goes. Laba is delicious. It doesn't taste very gamey to me at all. But what I've noticed coming to Guyana, whether it's tripe or intestines for pachauni, whether it's yard fowl for chicken curry, whatever the case may be, the meat is washed thoroughly, oftentimes with vinegar and lime. In this case, the laba has been cleaned and washed very, very well, and then curried down. Very similar to duck. It tastes like duck. It's a little bit chewier, but I guess it's a wild animal and it runs a lot more, so there's not as much fat building up on it. Excellent. Fermented potato, also popular for moonshine. We're gonna try fly. Why is it this color? Uh, that, that's the color of the potato. You can, you can just find that in the interior, not really here. Sweet and sour. Yeah. 
I almost want to say it tastes like potato water, but it doesn't. Like, you know when you're making latkes and you grate potato and you squeeze out the moisture so that it forms a patty? Paiwari and fly, other unique examples of how we can take ingredients that grow around us, process them, ferment them, and come up with completely different flavor profiles. Things that are very, very unique and things that, uh, things that stand out from the ordinary. I'm a fan of both but I'm gonna go back to the potato water. <laughs> Just wrapped a beautiful meal at Takuma Indigenous Touch. I learned a lot today. You know, I've grown up eating cheese rolls, bacon saltfish, bunjal chicken curry, dal puri, and I thought I had a grasp on Guyanese cuisine until I came and spent time with Colin and Valerie over here and learned about tuma and farine and paiwari and fly and all these amazing ingredients I didn't know about before. You know, it's not very often I've eaten with cassava bread. Colin and Valerie are doing something very special. They're preserving tradition, ways that they grew up in the forest, right? In the interior. And not only that, he's supporting these places by purchasing the liquids and purchasing the different ingredients that he needs. He is actually supporting these communities that otherwise would have to find other ways to support themselves. So it's so much bigger than just preserving the tradition and intro introducing it to new people. So there's more to it. There's more than just being able to preserve these traditions. It's also supporting the communities, which makes it very special. I encourage anybody coming to Guyana to come seek out Takuma Indigenous Touch and to sample Tuma and Laba and the wild forest animals that are available to us and also sample these unique cooking techniques and ingredients that they employ when they bring these dishes to life. This is an experience that everyone coming to Guyana should have. My time in Guyana is just about up, but my journey has just begun. With everything I've experienced here, I have a greater appreciation and connection to Guyanese cuisine. Going forward, I plan to use what I've learned here to showcase Guyanese cuisine as best as I can. From the people, to the landscape, to the food, it's been an unforgettable adventure, and I'll be back very soon. Mad love, Guyana. <laughs>